Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we are here today to hold this defendant, Erica Stefanko, accountable for what she did on June 20th to June 21st, 2012. We are here to hold her responsible for the actions she chose to take that day. Now, in the words of Shakespeare, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. And what that means is, whether you hold Erica Stefanko accountable as the principal actor or as an accomplice, all roads lead to the same place. Once you see the evidence and the testimony, all roads lead to Erica Stefanko being found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of aggravated murder, murder, kidnapping, and aggravated robbery. This murder of Ashley Biggs could not have happened if Erica Stefanko and Chad Cobb did not work together. It was planned together, and it was carried out together. As you listen to the evidence and testimony, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state just asks you to keep one thing in mind, and that is the concept of complicity. Attorney LaPrenzi talked to you about that in jury selection. The state would ask, as you listen to the evidence and testimony, that you keep in mind that a person who knowingly aids, helps, assists, encourages, directs, or associates herself with another either for the purpose of committing or in the commission of a crime is regarded as if she were the principal offender and is just as guilty as if she personally perform every act constituting the offense. The state would like that you keep in mind as you listen to the testimony and evidence that when two or more persons having a common purpose to commit a crime and one does one part and the second does another, those acting together are equally guilty of that crime. The state would ask that you keep in mind as you listen to the testimony and evidence that a person who is complicit with another in the commission of a criminal offense is regarded as guilty as if she personally performed every act constituting the offense. And this is true even if she did not personally perform every act constituting the offense or was not physically present at the time the offense was committed. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what happened and who was involved? What happened is Ashley Biggs was murdered. A zip tie was placed around her neck, causing strangulation to her death. She was beat. Her body was thrown in the back of her car, driven to a different county. Abandoned there, not to be found. That's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Now, who, who all was involved in this, and, and how did this come about? How did this murder come about? Well, we have Ashley Biggs, who was 25 at the time, working at Domino's. She was in a relationship with Brittany Dunson. Chad Cobb has since pled guilty to the indictment and is serving time in prison. Chad Cobb, at the time, was married to the defendant, Erica Stefanko. We have one couple on one side, Chad Cobb, Erica Stefanko. We have one couple on another side, Brittany Dunson. Now, what brought this about and what actually happened? Ladies and gentlemen, on the night of June 20th to June 21st, Erica Stefanko, knowing Ashley Biggs was at work, 
made a phone call. Erica Stefanko made that phone call that Lord Ashley gave her death, evidence and testimony will show. When she made that phone call, she used a fake name. It was approximately 11.42 at night. And she had Ashley come to a business that was closed. And not just come to that business, but come to the back door. That is what was instructed in the call for the delivery person, Ashley, to come to the back door. Once Ashley made that delivery, went to the area she was supposed to, that's when she was confronted by Chad Cobb. That is when the zip tie was placed. That is when she was beat. That is where she was thrown in her car. From there, evidence and testimony will show that her car was taken, she was taken, she was removed from the scene. Chad Cobb drove Ashley Biggs' car for miles to a different county while Erica Stefanko was in tow. She was right behind him, following him to the cornfield you just saw in the jury view. Erica Stefanko followed Chad up to that access road you just saw in the video. Chad drove Ashley Biggs' car all the way to the far right side, which takes time. And then he had to come back to the car. And the defendant was right there waiting. Evidence and testimony will show that Chad Cobb was messy. He was blunt for all to see. He gets in the car. What happens? Erica Stefanko drives home so he can wash away the evidence. Chad Cobb gets home. He showers. And then they think, well, if you're this messy, the scene at 647 West Turkey Foot Lake Road is messy. What do they do? They gather up cleaning supplies in a crate to go back to the scene to clean the scene up before they're discovered. So they all go back. And when I say they all, I didn't mention, there were four kids in tow this whole time. There were four kids in tow at the beginning when the call was made, uh, when they were at 647 West Turkey Foot Lake Road, the scene of the crime, when they went to the cornfield, back home, and now when they're going back to the scene, trying to clean it up. Four kids. They get back to the scene. However, it's not as they planned. The police are already there. So what do they do together? They go to 731 Rex Lake Road, the house you see and hid behind, parked behind, hid behind the detached garage. And that is where they were ultimately apprehended. Erica was in the car with the four children. Chad Cobb was hiding in the woods. Now, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, evidence and testimony will show a variety of different things from a variety of different sources. I want to bring out two main ones you'll see in here. One, Cindy Cobb. Cindy Cobb secretly recorded a conversation with Erica Stefanko. During that conversation, this, in essence, you're going to hear it straight from Erica Stefanko's mouth, because it's her, her voice on the recording. During that secretly taped conversation, the defendant admitted to making the phone call, Cindy Cobb asked her, you told me face to face you made the phone call and set up the meeting. The defendant, Erica Stefanko's response, there's no lie in that. Chad said, this is what we're going to do. This is your part in it. I carried out my part. I carried out my part. I did what he told me to do. It wasn't like he was forcing me to do it. Again, it wasn't like he was forcing me to do it. Wasn't like he had a gun to my head. 
she admitted that everything had been told exactly as it happened, then we'd both be in prison right now. I don't disagree with that. That's totally the truth. He came up with how to do it. He executed almost all of it. These are her words. He executed almost all of it because he didn't execute it all. She played a part, the defendant. She talked about things like, if this goes through and I can do this, I'm going to keep her school as a trophy. That is what she stated, Chad said. Evidence and testimony will show that this was not a spur of the moment, it was planned in her own statements. And that recorded call will show that. So the state asks that you please, it's long, it's three hours, that you please take the time to read it and or read over the transcript. She talks about in that call that she remembers the conversation under the tree. You'll hear testimony from Chad. That conversation took place at the crime scene before the call was placed. She talks about how she hated Ashley Biggs. And that's not the only time you'll hear testimony about the things the defendant, Erica Stefanko, said. You'll hear from an individual named Mary Brinkman. When you hear from Mary Brinkman, Mary Brinkman will tell you that Erica Stefanko, the defendant, admitted that she dropped Chad off at the business in New Franklin where the murder occurred. She admitted she left and waited for him to call her. She also admitted that they went to Chad's grandmother's house to hide out. These are Erica Stefanko, the defendant's words. And that is just some of the evidence and testimony you will hear in this trial, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. And again, with that, I want you to please keep in mind complicity. Because what, again, whether or not you choose to label Erica as the principal or the accomplice, she is still guilty of aggravated murder, murder, kidnapping, and aggravated robbery. For it was the defendant, Erica Stefanko, evidence and testimony will show, that made the call. It was the defendant, Erica Stefanko, that waited and followed Chad Cobb to drop the body off. It was the defendant again that waited while he drove the car into the cornfield and came back. It was the defendant again who saw him a bloody mess, took him home so he can shower. It was the defendant again with Chad Cobb that drove back to the scene with cleaning supplies to clean up that area. And finally, it was the defendant again that hid with Chad Cobb around the back of 731 Rex Lake Road. In for a penny, in for a pound. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state is confident once you hear the evidence, you will find Erica Stefanko, the defendant, guilty of aggravated murder, murder, kidnapping, and aggravated robbery. Thank you so much.